with few cell open circuit voltage or OCV, we quite often can use it to estimate partial pressure of oxygen. We can use this principle to measure partial pressure of oxygen for um, a, a fuel gas, in a fuel gas, or we can use it to measure partial pressure of oxygen in partial combustion and chamber. Again, we are based on the principle for high temperature fuel cell. We know that the overall reaction would be hydrogen combined with oxygen to form water. And uh, as we said before, the equilibrium cell potential would be standard cell potential E0 minus RT um, over NF natural log of reaction quotient. And then the standard cell potential would be minus uh, free energy change, standard free energy change over NF, and then the reaction quotient in this case would be activity for product raised to the power of stoichiometry number over reactant, product of reactant raised to the um, power of stoichiometry coefficient. Okay? Then, don't forget at the equilibrium, at the equilibrium, the, for this reaction, fundamentally for this reaction, we can write this equation. The free energy change, the free energy change at the equilibrium would be standard free energy change plus RT ln K. K is the reaction equilibrium constant. And at equilibrium, this free energy change should be zero. Free energy change should be zero, which means the standard uh, free energy change delta G zero would be minus RT ln K. Okay, that's what, what we learned in thermodynamics. Then as a result, the cell potential, the equilibrium cell potential would be we write, rewrite this equation, that G0, we write it down here, and uh, we would write that again, the data G0 minus becomes RT ln K, because this minus data G0, we move to the right side, it will just be RT ln K under equilibrium condition. So RT ln K over 4F minus RT over 4F, natural log of reaction quotient. Okay, and we can simplify it a little bit. We put RT over 4F um, in the front and the natural log of K times the reaction quotient, the K times the inverse of reaction quotient. Why? Because we have negative sign here, so we would inverse the product goes, the reactant goes to the numerator, the product goes to the denominator, okay? Then, don't forget, what is the equilibrium constant? Equilibrium constant would just be the, uh, would just be a constant, but it reflects the activity for product over activity of reactant. A product over reactant. A, activity of water raised to the power of two, activity of hydrogen raised to the power of two, activity of, um, oxygen, but this oxygen must be on the uh, anode side. We are talking about uh, all this equilibrium on the anode side. And then we have activity of hydrogen, active water, but the, the other oxygen would be at the cathode side. So then we can simplify it. The water, water cancel, hydrogen, hydrogen cancel. We would have RT4F natural log of activity of oxygen on the cathode side over activity of oxygen on the anode side. Okay. So here, the fundamental principle is for the equilibrium constant. For the equilibrium constant, if we look at uh, the anode chamber, we have hydrogen, we have hydrogen, we have anode side oxygen, 
we have anosite uh, water. These two must be in equilibrium under that condition when there's no current passing. So we can write K as the ratio for these three. And then we would cancel the common term, water activity, the hydrogen activity, we end up with this one. This is another way to write the Nernst equation, which is essentially the Equilibrium cell potential would just be like a concentration cell for the cast salt side, the air side versus the anode side, the hydrogen side. The same species that got transported would be oxygen, the number of electrons transferred would be four. And then from this relationship, if we want to know the activity for oxygen gas on the anode side, it will be the cathode side activity times exponential of minus 4F times equilibrium uh, cell potential over RT. So 4F equilibrium cell potential over RT, and then there's a minus sign because we want to know the anode side activity. Okay? So let's give it a plug number. Let's look at the same case of 1000 Kelvin, 727 degrees C. If the cathode side oxidant we are using is air, meaning uh, the activity for the cathode side is 0.21, it's roughly 0.21. And if we measure for such a few cell a equilibrium, cell potential of 1.12 volt, assuming no leakage through the electrolyte, then the anode side oxygen activity, anode side activity would, ca would be calculated to be roughly 5 times 10 to the minus 24, to the power of minus 24. And that is just uh, a way to evaluate the estimate, the anode side, the anode side oxygen um, partial pressure. The anode side or the hydrogen side uh, oxygen partial pressure. It's a very small number because the anode side is primarily hydrogen with uh, some water. And if the voltage is equilibrium cell voltage is determined, which means uh, equilibrium cell voltage, which means there's no net reaction to go from hydrogen and oxygen to water, or go from water to hydrogen or oxygen, then the anode side activity or the anode side oxygen partial pressure would be a very small number, and it can be accurate, reasonably estimated, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 24, a very small number, okay?